I hate online shopping, and I get the dopamine hit after clicking order, but after the box is opened and the dust settles, I am left with so much trash. And I never see bubble wrap anymore, so it's not even fun. It's just cardboard boxes and poly mailers and craft paper and shreddings. They get everywhere. I somehow don't have any right now. But you know these? Imposters. They just aren't satisfying to pop. So to figure all of this out, we are diving into packaging's past, exploring its present shortcomings, and building our own solutions for the future. Three, two, one, drop! Thank you to our patrons for supporting the channel and to the Oppo Inspiration Challenge for sponsoring this video. Learn more about the global finalists who are finding inspiration for people and for the planet by clicking the link in the description. So I've got a few leads on the evolution of packaging, but it's a little more sparse than usual. While doing all of this theoretical research, I also want to take a more practical approach. Hello, would you guys like to pack some eggs? Not really. Are you going to a farm? I am currently on a quest to try and figure out why there are so many packaging options and why so many of them are trash, figuratively and literally. Let me show you my pile of shame. Look at this. This is all just packaging that I need to like break down and I just put it in a different room and close the door. I want to be able to just throw these things away. I want it to be built out of things from the land. Or like, what if we just had less packaging overall? Or like less wasteful packaging overall, then we wouldn't even have to throw it out into the land, you know what I mean? I want us to test our ideas by packaging eggs and then throwing them out a window. I'm in the middle of a different video. I'm busy. <laughs> Sounds like a you problem. Bye! <laughs> no! Oh my gosh, I'm holding this egg and I'm realizing how fragile it is. I guess that's why they do this challenge, that would make sense. Now, when I'm thinking about this design, I don't want to have to buy anything, because I think that's just wasteful. Let me just see what I have around my house. For too long, the modern man has conceived of modern solutions to modern problems. I assume in the olden days, farmers would use crates made out of wood, hay and sawdust and soft Things. Have I done any research as to if they ever did that? Let's Google this. It seems like at some point in time, they did use wooden boxes to put eggs in. So after one Google search, that's what I'm gonna do. <laughs> uh, I just ordered the thing that I'm going to use for my egg drop, and I don't even know if it's gonna work. Anyway, I also did some reading in the meantime, and I found that while it's obvious why consumers would care about packaging, right? I found this business service bulletin that said that the Association of American Railroads estimated payouts of $100 million a year in damage claims from shipping companies. And that's in 1955 money. So everybody cares about good packaging, but what does that look like? It usually comes in three parts. A protective container to isolate the item and deflect damage, a container to hold it and take impact, and void filler to reduce movement. All of these are important, but frustrating given how unsustainable it can be. It would just be great if there were more sustainable options. When I was younger, I was in Scouts and we made rafts out of log and rope, so I'm thinking with some sticks and string, I could make something similar but smaller. What I'm thinking is that a tiny raft shape like this could become one side of a cube. Then I can build a little stick box that I can fill with, with sawdust and straw and things and then put the egg in there. Only problem is, I don't remember anything about how I made a raft when I was a kid. That has completely failed. <sighs> we're gonna be doing three wraps around the tube cordage and then we'll be doing two fraps around the, the racks. It worked. It only took me multiple hours, but I have made progress. It fell apart. I'm back to square one. Okay, step two of WikiHow. This is so hard. I thought we'd take a break from this mess to figure out our padding solution. So I'm thinking we can use a pencil sharpener to sharpen the sticks and then use the pencil shavings as our padding. This is how much sawdust one stick produces and I need to fill this up. One down, many more to go. So I just found out that some of the earliest packaging solutions were way more sustainable than they are today. Like there's this trade journal from 1894 that talks about how bottled goods were packed in barrels and surrounded by sawdust. And then there's this one that literally talks about packing eggs. And I know that Taha was trying to build something sustainable, so maybe he came up with something similar and he might have some insights as to why we stopped using it. Hello. I'm so tired. The initial plan was to make a box, but this is one whole day, so I may have to sacrifice Terry. No! Working with natural materials like this is really hard. If the stick is too thin, 
then it doesn't work. You know, nature doesn't come in clean one by one sizes. That's the problem. There's no standard issue nature. But I found some ingenious uses for the sticks that I've rejected. And I have been making sawdust with these sticks. Whoa! You need a fair bit of... Oh, wow. I thought you had a lot, but now that I see the egg in there, you got a way to go. I've got a way to go. Okay, so after talking with Taha, I realized that a lot of the problems he and I have could be resolved with biodegradable plastic made from sustainable resources. I know that sounds like science fiction. I always thought plastic couldn't biodegrade, but that's not true. I've encountered it, and you may have too, with compostable straws. Not paper straws, those are garbage, but they're straws made out of this organic plastic called PLA. Unfortunately, it only biodegrades under certain conditions. However, some companies are working on better options, like Blue a finalist in the 2023 Oppo Inspiration Challenge. They invented bioplastics that are certified to biodegrade in various environments, including water, with some of their plastics degrading almost as well as cellulose. So it has the flexibility and control of plastic without leaving such lasting waste. It looks like Blufa is solving one of the problems that caused other sustainable packaging solutions to eventually fade out of the packaging game. You see, after World War II, consumerism was on the rise, and the art of cushioning was accelerating rapidly and good package design was being increasingly recognized. We needed to start inventing synthetic solutions tailored for packaging. Here's what I found. Obviously, I've got an egg carton, but you can't just drop. <gasps> Once I eat the mushrooms that are in this bag, I will have an empty bag. I've got some leftover pasta and I think I can use it in some way to like pack the bag. This is a lonely saw. This is the design that I'm going off of. We've got the egg. It's gonna go inside of an egg carton. I'm probably gonna like cut this. Then it's gonna go inside of here. Package that baddie up. We could stop there, but we wanna make it a little bit more protective. So I am willing to bet that you know at least two of the major synthetic packaging solutions that came out in the 1960s. For example, packing peanuts. Check this out. Egg. While their origins are disputed, they improved on wood shavings with their signature squiggle shape. They're really interesting because when you overfill a box as recommended with packing peanuts, they compress and their shape makes them lock together to hold objects in place. She's not moving. I'm a little worried that these things might still crack the egg. So what I'm thinking of is using this wool sock. <laughs> I think we're basically set. The second major invention was Bubble wrap! While packing peanuts were excellent void fill, bubble wrap was wallpaper. Yeah, bubble wrap wasn't even designed for packaging. It's just that after it flopped as interior decor, the company behind it pivoted. Bubble wrap and other non-trademark cellular cushioning packaging materials were great at protecting fragile objects and dulling points during shipping. However, they had two major problems. One, it is expensive to ship air. When companies ordered bubble wrap to use in their packaging, they had to order it with bubbles. So the company behind it actually established 38 factories in just 18 countries to keep manufacturing close to buyers. It was better than dealing with more complex shipping. Now you might be wondering why they had to ship it already inflated. Well, even though bubble wrap was expensive in the long run, the alternative of inflating plastic cushions as orders are packaged could be prohibitively expensive to start up. You needed demand high enough to justify the cost of machinery and training. Who could possibly meet that demand? All right. Yeah, so an overall increase in consumption and consolidation in distribution meant that certain companies were able to invest in this more efficient approach. It's likely why you haven't seen traditional bubble wrap in a while. Instead, you might see this or this. But even though these are more efficient, they still don't solve bubble wrap's second problem. It is created to be thrown away. I guess I just think it would be cool if we were able to create packaging without having to create something new. I think Melissa felt the same way, so I'm gonna give her a call. Hello. How'd your egg thing go? I just finished packaging it. Is my package inside of this paper bag contain pasta, a sock, <laughs> an egg carton, and an egg? I just went around my kitchen and found stuff. I think this just like be resourceful. I'll see you for the egg drop. Maybe Bye. Maybe egg win. After speaking with Melissa, I realized that new solutions don't always mean new products. Sometimes it could be taking something old and finding a new purpose for it, which is almost exactly what Woola does. They're another Oppo Inspiration Challenge finalist and a certified B corporation that uses wool that would have otherwise been burned or buried to create envelopes, bottle sleeves, 
and even bubble wool. Not only are they turning trash into treasure, they're also trying to reuse and recycle their own wool by establishing a return program. So while cost, consumer preferences, policy changes, and possible trendsetters may be popping bubble wraps bubble, it looks like more sustainable and less wasteful packaging may be taking its place. But how will those packages actually get to you? Transport emissions are one of the main targets of climate action initiatives, which makes a great case for electrifying fleets and finding low emission alternatives. This is great for the last mile of deliveries. But what about the first and middle? Boats are slow and potentially unreliable compared to planes. And planes aren't electric, for now. The problem is that the batteries that are great for electric cars and trucks just aren't efficient enough for large planes or very long distances. But what about a small plane over short distances? Whoa! Ta-da! It's a bit precarious, but I think that as long as I don't crash the plane, I'll be fine. Ow! I think I see yolk. Oh no. <laughs> I thought that would work better. It didn't even take off. I tried to fly it and it just fell to the ground. I don't think it had enough power. And if this is what happens on a toy scale, I don't wanna think about the packages we might lose on a full-size plane. However, it looks like there are a few startups working on making batteries better. One of which is, you guessed it, an Oppo Inspiration Challenge finalist. The Flint Paper Battery is making batteries out of cellulose paper, zinc, and manganese, all of which are in greater supply than the things we currently use for batteries. Like the rest of their field, they're development is still in early days. However, they found some promising results compared to lithium ion. So these paper batteries could be a lightweight solution for everything from wearables to planes. This year, 687 innovative proposals from 66 countries and regions around the world answered the Oppo Inspiration Challenge to find inspiration for people and for the planet. From them, 15 global finalists have been chosen, including the bio-based biodegradable material from Blufa, surplus wool packaging from Woola, and paper batteries from Flint. These finalists have already received worldwide attention and an acceleration camp to develop their product. But on October 18th, they will be doing one final demo event in Singapore for the chance to be one of five winners, who each take home $50,000 in grants and more potential partnership opportunities provided by Oppo with its partners like Qualcomm Technologies, GSMA 5GIN, Amazon Web Services, and LinkedIn. It was really cool learning about all these finalists and how they're developing technology that feels really obvious. But taking it to a level that one person can't do alone. And you can learn more about Oppo and the Oppo Inspiration Challenge finalists by clicking the link in the description. But anyway, while Taha, Melissa, and I aren't doing anything earth shattering, it's worth asking, are we doing something egg shattering? Hello, everybody. Hello. Hello. Can I show you guys my build? Is that a wait, kinder wait, wait. egg? Is that a kinder egg? <laughs> you have a quail egg? It is a whack egg. I knew you were going to do something <laughs> tricky. This is rigged. Terry's back, baby. I've been shaving many woods, full box. I'm so one. I'm so one with this. <clears throat> this is my parcel. My egg is so well protected. Oh, yours is, yours is like a real package. I've completely covered my egg. I'm looking at the drop right now. That actually looks like it's gonna work. Terry better survive, bro. It's my plane sending signals. I'm getting on my ladder. I'm scared. Oh my god. Three, two, one, drop! <laughs> that was um, so bad. I have news, guys. What news? It fell out. <gasps> However, the <gasps> Shut egg up. is completely <laughs> fine. But how's Terry? It hit the ground and then this slightly opened and it just kind of very sadly rolled out. It reached its destination and it had speedy boarding and speedy deboarding. My egg also fell off. Oh, it's broken in multiple places. <laughs> oh, my package exploded. Oh. Wait, is that pasta? Oh, wait a second. My egg is in here. That looks safe as hell. Oh, look at that. I could have this for breakfast. I actually think my package was the best. I think that my design was the best one. Yeah, your uh, egg is dead. Thank you for packing eggs with me, guys. Never make me do this again. Thanks again to the Oppo Inspiration Challenge for sponsoring this video. It might just be the second year that Oppo has issued the Inspiration Challenge, but I think that they're well on their way to completing their mission. Technology for mankind, kindness for the world. So click the link in the description if you want to learn more about Oppo and the Oppo Inspiration Challenge finalists and get inspired. But either way, have a lovely day.